morning, everyone. Hey, How guys. Y'all what's doing? up? Hope y'all had a wonderful weekend. This here is Scuba Steve-O, and he is joining me this morning for the stream. So definitely check out his channel. I've already pinned his link in the comments up above. And let's say some hellos before I get into the topic. Appreciate it, my Scroll man. up real quick. Very first thing, bright and early, we got Fishy on Tank Six. Good morning. We got Jamie A. How you doing? Monster Fish Gal, how you doing, Lori? Lady R's in the house. What's up? Ganoxki, good morning. We got Andrew with Aquarium Daily. How you doing? Jenna P, good morning. Screwing. And we got Mark here this morning. How you doing? Yeah, I'm glad right. to be here. Learn some Cardina talk. Yeah, so did you want to give a brief introduction of what you've already done with shrimp, if anything, and what your direction is? Uh, sure. Uh, I'll just basically start out. Um, it was, what was it, Aquashella, Dallas. They had a creator's poster, and it had all the different creators on it. And they kind of sent you around to find them throughout the Aquashella and get their signatures. So, long story short, Grant from the Garden of Eater being one of the people on the creator poster. And he was like one of the very last people I had ran into. And then I, that's where I met Grant. So, long story short, is probably, when was it? I'm not too sure when it was, but I had bought my buddy some shrimp for his heavy planted tank. And... I never really thought about keeping shrimp until Grant kind of like mentioned to me. To, he's like, you should get in the shrimp and keep some shrimp. He's like, neos are easy. He's like, you can keep those in your tap water at home, blah, blah, blah. So I bought a few, put it in his tank. And you would still see a few little blue diamonds or some yellow ones around every now and again. Mm -hmm. so then that's when I set up me a five-gallon shrimp tank just for the shrimp. And I had him bring me some more blue diamonds and some more yellows because I want to breed a whole bunch out. So that way I can plumb full that tank full of different just blue and wild shrimp and yellow shrimp. Okay, very that's cool. kind of really how I started. Kind of Grant just kind of talked me into it. He's like, you should just get some shrimp. He's like, come on, I'll hook you up. Come on. <laughs> I was like... I never really thought about it. I always thought shrimp, I always thought they were cool, but I just never really considered it. Like at yeah. the Aquashellas, I've always like kind of took interest at the shrimp contest and was like, look at that blue one, look at those yellows and the red, all the different colors. It's just like so many different ones. Oh, yeah. There were a lot of entries at the Chicago Aquashella when I had went. So you've only been keeping shrimp for less than a year then, right? Yep. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, the first topic I wanted to talk about this morning with my mistakes uh, was when I first started getting into shrimp. Uh, the first shrimp that I got was a Skittles bag from Aquahuna. That was two or three years ago, roughly. And I put them in the 20 gallon tank that you guys always see over here. Uh, this one here. So I put them in there and even though everyone online uh, was saying if you mix the colors, they're going to all turn wild, I didn't want to believe it. And about six months later, sure enough, I had a lot of browns, a lot of clears. So that was my very first mistake. I wanted a fully colorful tank, and that's what I did. I got a bunch of different colors of Neos and put them all in the same tank. So Yeah. That's kind of how I am right now. See, I don't really mind the brown or the clear ones in my tank just because I'm kind of using my five-gallon to breed out more shrimp for my buddy's tank so I can get more shrimp in his tank, you know. And uh, I don't really mind the brown or the yellows, but I do realize, like, now that I'm on, like, my second batch of babies or shrimplets, whatever you want to call them, since uh, August in Chicago when – 
Grant had brought me some more blue diamonds and some more yellow neos. Mm-hmm. And I'm on my second batch. And I've seen some of the little baby ones. You can tell that they're really blue. But I think sometimes as they grow, they'll, they'll change color. And like, yeah, like, yeah. I realize I do have a lot of browns in there. So you experienced the same thing after just a couple of generations, all the wild forms started to pop up? Yeah, for sure. So I feel like if you don't pick them out and have pure pure blues or pure yellows, then you, you'll have that issue. I found that as an issue as well. But I don't mind it because I'm doing it to just to get as many shrimp as I can. Right. And, I mean, they, they are still really cool watching them crawl all around, but – my goal was to have like a whole bunch of different colors. For sure, the day. colorful ones. Yeah, I definitely right. rather the brown ones be blue and yellow for sure. I give you that. Right, right. So yep, with so the I'm neo- kind of there with you on that. Yeah. So uh, with the neo caradina, that was the major issue that I ran into was just the color uh, forming into the wilds. Um, so I had those going for a couple of years. And then I tore that tank down about a year ago and started into the Caradina hobby. So all of those shrimp got moved into another tank, a smaller 10-gallon tank. And I set it up for Caradina. When I uh, started with Caradina, I ordered a mixed bag of culls from Poseidon's Pets. Because ultimately that tank was going to be the cull tank. Because I had already had plans to set up a whole rack for Caradina. So I would need a call tank anyway, and mixing the genetics wouldn't really bother me at that point, you know. And uh, so the next mistake that I made was about a month or so after getting the first bag in, I started to order some specific types of Caradina while I was trying to get the rack set up still. So the new Caradina came in, and I put them all in the 20-gallon tank, and I planned on just taking out the blue bolts, put them in a tank in a couple weeks after the tanks were set up, the permanent tanks, taking out the yellow King Kongs, putting those in their dedicated tanks and all that. Well, some of them started to bury up, so I couldn't keep the buried ones for the permanent home because they would have the mixed genetics in them. So the buried ones all stayed in that call tank permanently. And with the Yellow King Kongs, I moved over all of the adults that were not buried. And I waited about four or five months or so, and still not a single one in the permanent Yellow King Kong tank had buried up. And I was really taking a closer and closer look at it. And I think all I was able to recover out of there was the males. So because of me being impatient and placing the order prematurely, I had to place a second order just to be able to have some females in my line. So basically you're saying all your females were buried up with mixed genetics and you had to leave them behind and then you moved them right. all males. Right, yeah, right. That's true. So slow and steady always okay, yeah, will saying. win the race. Don't try to rush things and put them in a mixed tank if you really want the genetics to stay true and don't want to risk having to leave some females behind because they are buried up. So that, that was a major mistake that I made. And then uh, the blue bolts, I was able to get those out and get those breeding in their permanent tank. But one of the shrimp that came in from Poseidon's Pets and the mixed call bag had to have been in a mixed tank at some point, or maybe there was a fry that, made it into that tank or something so i started to see some blue steel genetics in that tank so that whole blue bolt tank i tore down i sold off a bunch of the blue bolt blue steel mix and i i tossed a couple of orange eye shrimp down there that way i can uh start selectively breeding uh trying to do my own crossbreed get some uh orange eye crazy blues off of it so i do have a plan with that to kind of fix my mistakes there But it was a letdown uh, when I found out that I had made that critical error and ended up mixing the genetics somehow. Yeah, I bet. I couldn't even imagine. So, 
Oh, I wouldn't yeah. even think about something like that, to be honest with you. Right, right. And a lot of them looked really, really nice and really dark blue. If you've seen any of my videos of the call tank, most of them that I moved from that blue bolt tank down there to the call tank up here after finding out that I had blue steel genetics, most of them are still a really, really nice, deep, dark blue. But just having the two different genetics in there, the they're not pure Taiwan B anymore. So I just assumed instead of trying to get more blue steels off from it, I just uh, take and turn them into an orange eye instead. So we'll see where that takes me in the future. Nice. That's awesome. So uh, the very next issue that I ran into with the 20-gallon tank, I had some planaria pop up. Mm. And before this instance, I was not treating any of my plants. I was not boiling any of my botanicals. But I did get plants in from a few different people to stock in the 20-gallon tank. And so I'm assuming that it came in on a plant. It's a little bit more likely than being on a dried piece of uh, botanical, like the almond leaf or choya wood or something like that. Although it is still possible that that is where it came from. But I'm leaning more towards it came from the plants. So now I've been uh, treating all of the new plants with no planaria. I've been uh, mixing it in a bucket five times the recommended dose. And just leave them soaking for about an hour or two and... I haven't seen any planaria pop up in any of the tanks since then. Yeah, I also use that um, due to Grant. He actually put me onto that no planaria dip, and I kind of watched his video over, and I kind of just did a rerun on my channel, just a short, brief, brief video of me, like, doing it for my first time, just yeah. for, like, if anybody was kind of, like, nervous, because I was kind of nervous using it at first. He was like, do like one scoop or two scoops and put it under the bed for 24 hours and let it soak. Or like you said, double or five times the dosage and dip it for an hour or two and then just wash it off with the tap. Right. The RO or if you're going to put in Caridina tank. Yeah. Be RO. The RO water to rinse them off. Yeah. But uh, I, I haven't noticed any uh, issues with the plant health with dipping them in no planaria. Um, Me neither. I personally think it's a little bit safer for the plant versus using peroxide or a bleach dip. But, yeah, I feel comfortable you know. using it as well. One problem I ran into when I had first set up my shrimp tank, and this is really the only problem I had ran into, scuds. I had found a scud, and I didn't really know what scuds were until I started doing research about like little different organisms and stuff in my tank and I, that's when I like posted a picture in discord that's like another thing the discord people are really good to help you with and I sent it to Grant <coughs> excuse me and he's like can you send a picture of the side of it so I caught him out and put him in a little specimen container did a little photo shoot with him and sent it to Grant he was like yeah that's the scud he was a little green scud and then that's when I learned scuds can be bad for your shrimp your baby yep. shrimp and uh, yeah. prevent your fry from... That's actually uh, the next one I was going to talk about because I had those in my uh, Black Galaxy tank a couple months ago. Terrible, so terrible thing. They, they, they popped up. I don't know where they came from, but I did see about four or five of them in there swimming around. And I had a feeling that they were scuds, but I wasn't completely positive. So I sent the picture over to Grant and he goes... Yep, that's definitely scuds. Just manually remove them, and over time, you'll get rid of the whole population. Well, I didn't want to have to chance that with the colony. So what I did, I took all of the shrimp out, put it in one of the specimen containers, one of these guys here, and dropped an airline in there overnight. That way, the shrimp would stay alive. And then I took my CO2 unit, I took it off the 20-gallon call tank, and I went full send on that tank. That's a great idea. <laughs> they, they do make products that will kill scuds, but those products will also kill your shrimp. So I was not going to use any of those in the tank. And I know that CO2 is deadly for shrimp and aquatic life in high concentrations, 
but over the course of an hour or two with a lot of aeration afterwards, you can pretty much uh, get rid of all the CO2. It just dissolves back into the atmosphere for you. So I completely gassed that tank off, that <laughs> aquarium off, and when I lifted the lid towards the end of it, I could actually smell a little bit of the CO2. Like, it's a really weird chemical smell. I didn't know CO2 oh, wow. had a smell to it. That's how much I was pumping into there, though. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a good idea. I wouldn't even think about that. See, what I did was I just kind of caught all the shrimp that I could out. Well, actually, what I did was just take all my plants out. I took all the plants out, and I had an African cichlid grow out tank from my fry. And yep. I know they'll eat scuds like a snack. So I just took all my plants, all my floating moss and stuff, and put it in there and gave it like yeah, a okay. week. And then eventually I just assumed it was scud free. And then that's when I still used the no planaria dip as well before yeah. I had returned the plants back into the tank and siphoned them out with the siphon tubing. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I think I scuds will lie. Bury down into the substrate too, though, and lay their eggs and stuff. So, yeah, I think I, I, think, I think I had had a bare substrate when I had first started, and I didn't oh, okay. use like the stratum or whatever from Fluval at first. Because when I had first got the shrimp, it was just the shrimp and a few plants in there, and like a couple moss, little balls, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. And then that's when I'm re I recently started getting into the fluval stratums and the volcanic ash and stuff for like the caradinas and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm kind of learning about the different substrates as well as the water parameters a whole lot thanks to you and Grant. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to it. So I feel pretty, <clears throat> I feel I'm pretty still, confident. I'm still learning every day. <clears throat> right. You know that. But I, I feel pretty confident. I do. So we'll see. Good, good. So the next issue that I had uh, was I had some sort of contamination in my purple metallic tank. I don't know what it was for sure. Um, I do have a dog which wears a flea collar. So it's possible a stray hair happened to land in there. But the purple shrimp were very lethargic. They weren't moving around much. They were kind of just staying still in there. And so I put a bunch of aquachar in there uh, per Grant and Shelby's recommendation. And for those of you who don't know, aquachar is a hardwood charcoal that undergoes some sort of secret special process that Brian Covey has invented and perfected. And uh, it doesn't have to be replaced like normal carbon does. You can put it right onto the substrate, just free float it. And so that's what I did. Um, and within a day or two, they all started uh, acting normal again. They all perked right up. They all became alive again. Um, I did have one death, but that was before the aquachar even went in. So uh, the aquachar definitely saved a lot of money there. For those of you who don't know, purple metallics are an extremely expensive phenotype. And uh, that definitely would have hurt to lose them. <clears throat> Um, Lady Har R has a question for you. Okay, let me scroll up. 917. We found it. Awesome. Oh, Lady R says she noticed in one of my recent videos that I use Bacter AE to expedite biofilm and beneficial bacteria. How long do you let it integrate before adding shrimp? So the longer you wait, the better, but it, it doesn't really take that long. I only waited about two days, and I'm also feeding soy ahoy and barley bite food into that, just so that I have a little extra room for some uh, bacteria to grow, a little extra sugars for the bacteria to grow. <clears throat> and then I do always dechlorinate the tap water with Seachem Prime. I am going to be trying Fritz next because I've heard that works just as well, if not better. So that will be the next dechlorinator that I try using, see if it is as effective as everyone claims. Good morning, Scuba. How you doing, Kelly? You got Invertico here. 
got Jeff here. How are you doing? Sorry if I missed anyone. <clears throat> All right, so we covered the contamination in the purples. The uh, next issue that I found was over the summer in my uh, yellow King Kong tank, which is the very top one on the rack over here. Um, during the heat wave that we had this past summer, I started to uh, notice that I had a uh, shrimp dying off every couple of days or so. And then I also noticed that uh, one of the shrimp looked very, very milky. And so that milky color is uh, usually going to be necrosis, which is basically the muscle dying off. And uh, that's caused by heat issues. And high temperatures are going to cause bacterial issues, going to cause necrosis. So because I didn't have enough uh, circulation in the room, not enough air conditioning, I was having a little bit of issue with the top tank on the rack because naturally heat rises. So to combat that, I did add a small little uh, fan to point up towards the top rack just to kind of get some air flowing from the floor all the way up to that tank. So it sits about six, six and a half feet high up there. It's about eye level where that tank is on me. So that, that was uh, one issue that could have been avoided, but I'm glad that I uh, learned the issue and caught it before it was too much of an issue. So did, so did the, putting the fan on it help? It helped it? Absolutely, it did. So a, after I put the fan on it, um, I didn't notice too many more issues, and they were all starting to act a lot more lively a Definitely few days to a week it afterwards. It did still take a little bit of time to recover, but luckily I was able to. So, All right, cool. Then uh, rocks. So when I was uh, first starting to plan out the shrimp tunnel, and I did post a video on this. Um, when I was first trying to plan it out, I was going to use some uh, zebra dolomite stone, or zebra stone, some people call it. Um, when I, uh, I, I got it pretty much almost all put together, I uh, just had to glue it up. And then uh, someone had told me, hey, you might want to check that for carbonates. So I did, and sure enough, the vinegar fizzed on it. Um, which that would raise the carbonate hardness or the KH, which is going to raise your pH. And I was planning on using this for a caradina tank, so that's definitely not ideal. Yeah, I didn't know that certain rocks were bad for caradina until uh, Grant and Shelby streamed the other day, and I had put some dragonstone rocks in there. And I was like yeah. freaking out. I was like, oh, crap, oh, crap. Uh, hurry up and went over there and pulled them out real quick. But then they end up saying Dragonstone is okay for the Caradina, so I'll put them back. Yep. But I was yep. like, oh, yep. no, oh, no. <laughs> it's like first mistake. Yep, yep. Um, that's a very common mistake that I've seen as well on uh, a bunch of the Facebook groups and stuff. Everyone's saying, hey, uh, I've got Caradina set up, but why, why do I still have KH? I'm using RODI, and this is the mineral I'm using. Oh, what rocks do you have in there? That's the very first one. The rocks from the water. Right, right. So I do have a video posted up a few weeks ago uh, showing how I like to test the rocks. If one of the mods could link that, that's super, super helpful, I think. So then the last issue that I want to talk about is putting fish with the shrimp. Can it be done? Yes. Should it be done? it all depends on your personal goals with the tank. So I have noticed that even with the guppies and endlers being in the shrimp tanks, I will have a couple of babies that make it to maturity, but for the most part, they're all going to become fish food. Even in the heavily planted tank behind me, the 20 gallon, it became fish food. I'm only seeing a couple of babies per month now versus before I put any shrimp in there, I was having 50 to 100 babies a month. So it's a huge, huge difference. Yeah, that's how I started off with the shrimp in my buddy's tank. And 
that tank has probably probably has, I think it's like black neons and some just some regular old neon tetras. But that's what's mixed in with the shrimp over there. And you'll see some blues and some yellows every now and again, but not as many as I would like. I would like for it to right. be shrimp all over. Yep. So that's kind of why I ventured off and started my own little five gallon tank to kind of see if I can get them to breed out. Yeah. And that way, get him some more shrimp in there, get that tank looking lively again. Yep. And then I did just uh, recently move all the sick endlers out of the tank that has the backline pintos and the uh, raccoon tires in it. So hopefully I can start getting those to breed out a little bit more and have a better baby survival rate. And I also moved Bob the Beta out of the yellow Goldenback Neo tank. So he's in his own tank along with some Neon Tetras are in that tank with him. So hopefully I can uh, get some more uh, yellow Neos to start breeding up for me. Yes, sir. But I did find uh, Bob the Beta did for a fact eat a shrimp i was uh just oh before thanksgiving i was uh doing a trimming of all the water sprite in his tank and so because i was already doing the trimming i already had the camera rolling i was planning to post up a video of the plant trimming and how i'm doing that and towards the end he decides that while he was playing with his mirror he was going to barf one up oh, so no. I, I know for a fact <laughs> Without a doubt, YouTube. he was snacking on the shrimp. Oh, so no. instead of posting the trimming video, <laughs> I decided to just post a YouTube short um, of the beta throwing up the shrimp, just kind of as like a whimsical comedy type thing, oh, no. kind of in a little bit of bad taste. But at the same time, it does raise awareness that even betas are going to eat the shrimp from time to time. So... That's uh, my last issue that I can recall having. So, with you being done with your last issue, I texted you the other day with the issue that I had. I have found two or three little shrimp on the floor in front of my shrimp tank. So, I think my mistake was having the water level too high. And like you said, I never knew shrimp migrated from ponds of water and they it's like in their, I don't know, their genetics to merge over from pond to pond or from puddle of water to puddle of water. So I think that's kind of where I messed up is having my water level too high for the shrimp to be able to crawl out and get out the tank. Yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> I would always say maybe at least an inch and a half or two inches probably below the rim of the tank would probably be ideal or something like that. I'm not no I'll professional. keep it like a half inch or so below. It doesn't have to be that far below. But well, if you don't want your fish or your shrimp to jump out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. But yeah, for sure. Don't have your tank filled to the to the top because they will crawl out of there. I learned that. Yeah, now. yeah. It's definitely a possibility. Um I've never had any crawl out of my tanks, but I've heard from others that it can happen just uh normal uh behaviors of them trying to jump from tide pool to tide pool trying to find the larger body of water if the like the tide comes down water recedes or dries up or whatever you know so they can crawl on land for brief amounts of time but th they do need the water to actually live and survive so that that's why they uh turned a little crispy on you behind your dresser or this tank stand or whatever mm -hmm. you tank got yep and uh, the other thing is, I've also heard that uh, if you have any sort of parameter swings, any swings in the hardness or the temperatures, they'll also try to escape the tank, trying to find a better source of water. Everybody else seems to be acting fine and normal, so I think they were just crazy and trying to yeah, find it's a new very possible. Of water. <laughs> There's only a yep. two or three. If it was like five or six or so, I'd kind of be worried. Right, right. But I did a water change the other day, and everybody seems all right. So I think we're good. Oh, that's good. Yep. All right. That so was, that was one one thing I was kind of dumbfounded on. I was so confused. 
Did, did you have any other issues that you've encountered so far? No, not really. Not not with the Neos. I've only keep the kept keeping the Neos so far. And that's really the only two problems is the scud issue, which I kind of just broke the tank down and just kind of reset it back up. And then the shrimp crawling out. Yeah, okay. And then uh, one last thing I forgot to write down, but I did want to mention. When I uh, first got into Caradina, I didn't have an RODI set up, so I was using distilled water. And... I did not have a backup plan for if I needed emergency water changes and stuff like that. So when I had the planaria outbreak and I had the cycle crash and had to do a 90% water change, it was around 1030 at night when Grant and Shelby were streaming and they suggested doing that heavy of a water change. So I had to drive all the way to Walmart 1030 at night to grab 18 gallons of water. Oh, wow. So, Always make sure you have a sufficient amount of water on hand for emergency situations, especially. Yeah, if you don't have an RODI set up, you really want to have plenty of gallons of water on hand. That's another reason I'm kind of getting into the Caradina, because back in, it was like in December, I had one a giveaway for some type of Caradina or whatever from Grant and Shelby. Yep. And then I had got the RO un RODI unit for uh, my saltwater tank. So I figured, why not try to just get as much use and get my money out of that thing as possible and experiment with new things along the way. Oh, absolutely. You never know. And you see where Caradina lead me into new friends like you. So, yeah, you know, yeah. De definitely a good community. Mm hmm. I agree. All right. I'm going to scroll up a little bit and uh, start hitting the comments. Sounds good to me. Good morning, Annie Finn. How you doing? How Lady Earth, doing? thank you morning, so man. much for sharing all of the links that you had this morning. I have been seeing that. I'm talking about uh, sponsoring karaoke machine for the Clash. Yeah, I saw that <laughs> the fish cord. Oh yeah, they had got one for my little sister's birthday party on Saturday, but I had to go to work. With they had everyone singing, all my cousins, my aunt, everybody was singing. It was it was great. Yeah, I was like I, need, I was like, I need to get one of those for the Clash. I was like, there's gonna be so much liquor. It's like, I can get everybody to sing. <laughs> yep. Good morning, Vibes. That's what Geek Boy said. He said, is there going to be enough liquor? I don't think there's going to be enough liquor for all that, for me to listen to all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there is a winery just a couple miles up the road, so just go grab a couple bottles. You'll be fine. Yeah, me and Kelly are going to do a duet, and we're going to yeah, okay. record it. <laughs> I said, what's that? She, then she sent it. It was a Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton song. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Scotty Aquati? Good morning. We got Xanadu here this morning. How you doing? Got passing wind this morning. How you doing? <laughs> a great name. Thank you for posting that link for the rock testing, Jamie. Yeah, cause I didn't, I didn't even think about the rock thing. I kind of just put the rock in there, and then Grant and Shelby was like, "Yeah, certain rocks can buffer your pH," and I was like, "Yeah, that's right," cause I used Texas Holly Rock in my cichlid tank to. Make the pH higher. I was like, yeah, it makes sense. Yep. Didn't even think uh, about it. Geek Boy says, even fish as small as CPDs and blue axolotl resbora will predate on the shrimplets. That's very good to know. Thank you so much. Yeah, shrimplets are they're little teeny, teeny things. My rule of thumb is usually if it can fit in its mouth, it, it'll become food at some point. 
Unless so you get passing lucky. wind wants my air pump. So I got that air pump <laughs> from uh, someone on Facebook. It was a used unit. But if you want that same exact one, it's the uh, Metal Blower 45C. And Aquarium Co-op sells it on their website. Hashtag not sponsored, I don't think. No, I'm not sponsored by anyone yet. <laughs> but my email, uh, cryptkeeperaquatics at gmail.com if anyone would like to sponsor me. Love yeah, to show off some of your products. Yep, and so would I. <laughs> Crypt Keeper is the man, I'm telling you. He's been helping me with this Caradina stuff for like two weeks. I've just been blowing up his Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Tolan. He seems like he don't mind it, so. We got another scoop of Steve here. What's up? Scoop Steve Vlogs. Yeah, I met him. Well, I haven't met him. I've seen him around in chats. He's cool. Yeah, his live stream is a lot today? of fun. A lot of salt water shown. I was going to say, he's a salt water dude. Yep. Yep, I like it. So, I'm Kelly ate all of my shrimp too. last week, she says. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't have any experience at all with any killifish, but I have heard the least killies are one of the safer options for wood shrimp, but I haven't tried any of them yet personally. So Jim mm -hmm. is saying they can walk away. Do they take all their toys with them? Scuba, you've had them uh, walk out of your tank. Uh, Sometimes they do. <laughs> Sometimes they're just in such a hurry, they leave them behind, you know? <laughs> Geek Boy hasn't had any of them crawl out, even on his rimless tanks with no lids. And I, I haven't had any crawl out of mine either. I know uh, Rob over at Flip Aquatics has posted a couple videos showing shrimp that have crawled out and became crispy, but I haven't had any myself personally. <clears throat> well, that's good. I don't wish that on anybody. So, Passing Wind says, are there any live foods that we can feed shrimps like Daphnia? I don't believe so. Uh, Vegetable-based diets are always going to be safer for them anyway. So I don't feed any live foods to the shrimp. I am feeding some uh, micro worms to the 20 gallon behind me, but that's only because I've got guppy and CPD in there along with the shrimp. I'm not sure if the shrimp are eating them as well, but for the most part, I stick with a vegetable based uh, pellet food. Chat just jumped on me. Uh oh. Yeah, usually, hold on, I'll show you what I feed the, I got one of the sampler bags and one of these other ones. Uh -oh. so weird, hoy. Yeah, I've got that as well. And so I love that stuff. It's just, I uh, got one of the on. sampler packs as well, and it just yep. comes with... One, two, three. So, like, five or six different types of food. For yeah, you. that comes with the Envy Complete, Envy Growth, Envy Shell, the Food Fight, and then a baby food. Yep. It's uh, yeah. six grams of each, I believe. Yep, correct. You got it. So, good morning, Sharpie. How are you? How you doing, after nerd? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, Scuba Steve is verifying that he is not Scuba Steve O. <laughs> <laughs> nope. He's another cool Steve. Let's see. Where am I? Keeps jumping on me. Uh-oh. Yeah. That's what happens when you get Rico's behind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all all right. right, see you later, Jamie. Hope you have a great day. Take care, Jamie. Hey, yeah, you have a good one. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. Appreciate that. 
Jenna says that her ghost knife lets the call shrimp continue to multiply, so that's pretty cool. You should take your ghost knife out and cuddle them. <laughs> not eating all your shrimplets. Yep. Definitely give the ghost knife an extra treat or two. Mm-hmm. That's surprising, for real. You figured he would be in there like, going, having a little yep. field day. Good well, morning, good. Annette. Just nailed it. How you doing, Annette? Good morning, Snoop. So Sharpie says that bristle nose and clown plecos do great with shrimps. The odd one might get inhaled, but never underestimate the power of pleco poop. All right. Mm -hmm. Pleco poop for the win. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag. So how June asks how big do the needles usually get? And I'd say in my experience, probably like, I don't even know, like a, I got some that are big, some that are small, so I'll leave this up to you. Probably about an inch, maybe an inch and a half if uh, they do live a little bit longer than a year. But a year is typically the end inch. of their life, so they don't have a huge amount of time to grow big. Yeah, most of, most of mine are about an inch or so. Good morning, Nathan. So, Nano has seen shrimp jump out when they get spooked. Hmm. That's good to know. Are you a scary person, Steve? Maybe Definitely that's what it is? Scary person. <laughs> good probably, morning, Pile. Peeked my head down there and they probably jumped out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sharpie just feeds his shrimp whatever he feeds the fish that day. Yeah, they, they will eat the fish flakes and stuff like that, too. Um, I just personally prefer uh, all-vegetable diet because you've got all the botanicals and the antibacterial properties from that. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're getting into the more higher-end shrimp. I didn't know shrimp could get up to how expensive that I've seen and heard. So... Definitely. Uh, Nathan is asking, how fast do shrimp grow? I have some blue neos, but they are all small. Some were tiny, like they may have only been a few days old. So the shrimp, it takes about 30 days for the egg to hatch, roughly. Uh, temperature is going to play a huge role in that, as well as how much protein you're feeding them. And then uh, once they're hatched, they take about a month or two to reach their juvenile state, which is about a centimeter in length. And then from there, another month or so to reach an adult breeding size. Yeah, mine go, grow pretty fast, depending on, I would say, how much you feed them. I probably feed mine once or twice a week. Yep. Uh, how much you're feeding and what temperature you're uh, keeping the tank at is definitely going to influence the growth rate. Good morning, to feed too much to try to just keep the snails and all the other stuff and the algae down. Yep. That was another problem I kind of had was the snails. See, I, I love snails because the little bit of slime trail that they leave behind on the glass, on the rocks, on the wood, uh, that's going to be a great food source for the baby shrimp. I don't mind a few of them, but once it gets to like the hundreds and the thousands getting excessive, so I just kind of <laughs> siphon a few out. Yep. So Jenna says that a mono shrimp love to steal fish food and scurry away with all of it. So I've <laughs> never kept a monos personally. Um, that is one that I want to try in the future, but I haven't done it yet. I can't wait for my tank to get cycled. Yeah. Uh, how long has that tank been set up now? Uh, for about a week or two. Yeah, okay. So next month on the 20th will be the the 30 days period that oh, all Grant right. had recommended for me to wait. Yep. Just to build up that biofilm stuff just to 
help it. Mm. Yeah. If uh, you blind feed it one of those uh, soy ahoy pellets, that's going to uh, jumpstart the uh, maturing of the tank a little bit. The uh, sugars in the soybean are going to help to grow some biofilm for you. Appreciate that. I'll throw one in there after we get off of here then. So June says there are only three shrimp in there are shrimp in three Oscar tanks. They are very small. I thought they were worms. <laughs> yeah, so baby shrimp are extremely, extremely small. I'm surprised that your Oscars aren't eating them yet, honestly. Uh, I definitely want to see some updates on that project. Yeah, that would be interesting. They probably can't see them because they're so tiny. That's yeah, yeah. Thinking. Then uh, Grant has mentioned before that uh, certain very, very large fish won't see shrimp as a viable food source because of how small the shrimp are. So yeah, that, that's a possibility with them. Or they're just blind Oscars. Yep. Oh. And Sharpie says, fan shrimp, however, you want green water, ideally. So I haven't kept those types of shrimp either, but I do know that some shrimp are filter feeders and they, they don't really go after uh, food pellets and flakes and stuff like that. They're just filtering out the water to feed similar to how a clam would eat. Hmm. That's cool. Good morning, Nate. Chat jumped again. Almost Thank caught up though. Nate. So Sharpie says, sometimes they surprise you, June. He's found some with his Nanakara, had an unexpected colony turn up in a tank with butterfly cichlids, too. That's super, super awesome. Hiding spots, is the, hiding spots is the one key to uh, keeping shrimp with fish, but it's still super risky in my opinion, especially after seeing how uh, little production rate I've had off from uh, the tanks that did have some fish in it. Yeah, that's kind of how I started off putting the shrimp into the my buddy's heavily planted tank with uh, it just had some guppies and some neons and some black tetras in it. So I just put a few in there, and I went over there probably out month or so ago you can still look in there and see some blue ones and some yellows just hanging out so i was like cool you still got some shrimp in here man yeah very cool so passing wind says they haven't made up their mind yet wants to start with either red cherries bloody marys or maybe even the yellows completely up in the air at this point so i love all three of them but if i had to choose one out of those three I'd probably have to say the yellows. And the reason I say that is because you're not going to have as many calls with the yellows. They typically tend to breed a little bit more true. They're easier to keep that nice bright yellow color. The yellows are some of my favorites. They, yeah. they look like little highlighters swimming around too, which who doesn't want highlighters in their aquarium, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, me putting them shrimp in my buddy's tank kind of, like you said, if you have enough hiding places and enough plantage coverage, then you could be okay. But mm -hmm. I would just stick with the shrimps only, just to just depend on what your your goal is. Like you said at the beginning of the thing, right? You know, so some people just want the shrimp because they want shrimp. Some people want shrimp because they want to breed them to sell. Some want them to breed specifically just so that they have the brightest color possible. So or depending on like what me. your opinion and what your end goal is, is going to completely change your whole opinion on how you're going to go about tackling the projects. It's kind of why I bought more to breed out to see if I could get them to breed so we could have more in his nice planted tank because I think the blues and the yellows would look real lovely in his heavily, heavily planted tank. I'll send you a pic on Discord later on. Sure, All right. what tank it is, but okay. I sent it to Grant, and he was like, "Wow, he's like that'll be a great tank, plenty, plenty spots." Yeah. 
So Sharpie says an overgrown jungle does help. <laughs> we got Bob Moss in here. He says the first mistake was starting a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Good was one. that a burn on me or were you saying that was your first mistake? <laughs> <laughs> Bob Moss. So there you go. I was about to get to that one. Nathan's asking which of the two shrimp is darker in color, blue diamond or blue dream? So I believe it's the blue dream, but I'm not 100% positive. Uh, the Garden of Eater has a great video explaining all of the differences of those two shrimp there in particular. Uh, it was maybe about two or three months ago that he had posted that video. Definitely check that out. You'll learn a lot more and be able to identify which of the two that you have. So I do recall your comment from yesterday on uh, one of my posts. Uh, you were asking me which one I think you had. and Honestly, it's very tough to say. But go, go take a look at that video and uh, see if you can uh, find some similarities with one or the other compared to what you have. Nate, the Tangerine Tigers started to breed so much better after he put some pygmy quarries in. Might be just a fluke, but I will take it. So one thing that could be going on is uh, you're now feeding some uh, food to the water column instead of a dedicated spot of one little pellet. You know, you got flake spreading around a little bit further, so you'll have a little more biofilm growth. And the quarries are going to poop a little bit, so they're going to also spread a food source for the babies to feed off from. That's just something I could see possible. I've never kept pygmy quarries. I know they're a lot smaller than most other quarry cats. So you're probably not going to have as many shrimp getting consumed. But I have heard that quarries do consume some shrimplets occasionally from time to time. So j just a couple things to consider there. <clears throat> So Sharpie says, breed for sale here. Get the same price for wilds as you do cherries or whatever fancy color here. That's super, super unfortunate, Sharpie. If you're putting in the work to select a breed and make them as bright, vivid color and full saturation as possible, you should be able to expect at least a little bit more. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Good morning, Danikin. How are y'all this morning? So, Jenna believes that the blue diamond is the darkest. Blue dream is moderately blue, and blue jellies are light blue in terms of neos. I was thinking that diamonds are darker, but I don't want to say anything because I don't know nothing. I know a little bit, but that's about it. So, Kelly would like to find a lighter color blue shrimp than blue dreams. So, check out like a blue velvet or a blue jelly. Those two in particular are going to be a little bit lighter. <laughs> so Bob says it's all our mistake. Add stress to a relaxing hobby. LOL. Well, I kind of find YouTubing fun personally. Um, I don't think that it's stressful. I think it's a lot of fun. The only thing I don't like about it is that I do all my editing from a phone screen, so that's kind of tricky. But at the end of the day, I'm a lot happier being able to post and share about my journeys. And then he says this should be his hill to die on. Neo grading is fake news. I'll allow you to die on that hill. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've seen a lot of really, really nice grade cherries. I've seen a lot of really awful grade cherries. Um, and you can tell the differences between the high grade, the medium grade, the low grade, the call grade, the wilds. There, there's a huge, huge difference in all of them. Yeah, I'm excited to see what you and Big Shrimpin' bring to the Clash for the Shrimp Show. Yeah, I've 
I've got a few that I want to enter. So I'm super, super excited. Hopefully I can add an award or two behind me on that wall. Kind of drift up some, the wall a little more. Some wild Neos to troll y'all or something. <laughs> Just teasing. Hey, you, you never know. Last year I... Nice run a win. That'd be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, I saw some uh, really, really nice fish bones entered in the show, and it was a uh, red cherry that won it. <laughs> wow. So you never know. Right. Yeah, it's, it's always a surprise, because you never know what the next person's going to bring. Right. And it's not like the aqua shell where it's separated into different categories, you know, Neos competing oh, against really? each other, oh, Caradina awesome. competing okay. against each other. Okay. So it, it's a makes it more interesting in a way, right? Right. But kind of not fair at the same time, but more interesting. right. Absolutely. So I was talking to Scotty about that, and uh, he said if there's enough interest this year in the shrimp itself, then they might be able to justify making shrimp its own contest altogether or its own show altogether. But Again, they're going to need to see a bunch of tanks filled with well, shrimp. Thanks for telling me that, because now I'm definitely going to bring at least some uh, yellows or some blues just to fill up a tank. Just yeah, so I've got. Scotty has to do that next year. <laughs> yeah, I've got 18 different varieties here, so I'm going to enter as many as I can. So hopefully, we can uh, bring some shrimp awareness to Pennsylvania. Shrimp squad coming through. So, Passing Wind, what do you think has the highest resale option? Cherries, yellows, or another Neo? So, according to what I have heard, the cherry shrimp and the blue shrimp, they're always going to sell more of. But in terms of pricing, they're all pretty much priced right around the same, uh, as long as you're comparing the same grades. So, Bob just means the names are kind of a gimmick or whatever. So, I I halfway mm -hmm. see that, but on the other hand, there's got to be a reason for some of the different names, even though there's two or three different blue shrimp. Um, I'm not super into the neogenetics, so I don't know for a fact, but there's got to be a reason. <clears throat> So, Jenna, are you entering shrimp or fish at the Clash? So, I will be entering all shrimp at the Clash, and maybe even a couple of photographs for the photo show. Got a couple nice ones on my phone that I took. I just have to see if they translate good on a piece of paper, so we will see. That'd be cool. Bob said, Caradina have a very specific naming, but the Neos are on the Wild West. They kind of are. Um, but even with the uh, Caradina, you've got a bunch of shrimp that have two different names for the same exact thing. So it still gets tricky, but it's just uh, one more thing to go research on and learn about before you accidentally order two of the same exact thing. That's true. That'd be something I would do. And Sharpie makes a good point here. The reason for the names is for people to jack their prices up by claiming to have something better. So that's halfway true. The other half of it is different countries call things different shrimp. And when people are importing them, they think that, oh, well, that's what this country's calling it, so this must be exclusive, a new type or whatever, and they just carry on that same name. And then after people start breeding them out, they kind of see that they're the same thing, and slowly they just, you know, they just fall that's, under the that's kinda how this area. I forget. I don't know if it was the LRB TGOE tour or not, but they were talking about the different amount of dots on the shrimp. Like, one would have just a few amount of dots, 
they would look exactly the same, but the dots, it would have like, one would have more white dots than the other, and it would be a totally different type of shrimp. It would be like a whole new Yeah, thing so that's, uh, that's the galaxy shrimp. So what you're looking for in those is more dots on the face is a higher grade. And uh, once you get like around nine dots or so, it becomes a snowflake, I believe it is, or more than nine dots is a snowflake, something like that. And then once right. those dots start to actually fill in the face, that's when you start getting into the boas. See, so it's, ju now. it's just on a uh, number of dots and uh, how the dots are formed is what you can uh, label them as. But they are the same exact shrimp at the end of the day. They're just uh, selectively bred more for the higher grades. Okay, that's pretty neat. The least amount of dots is going to be the most common to uh, pop out in the offspring. That's why those are a lower grade and lower price. Okay. Makes sense. All right, so I've made it to the bottom of the chat. I think uh, we're going to end it here. We're at about an hour. Thank you so much for hopping up here with me this morning, Scuba. It was definitely a lot of fun. Hopefully you all have learned from my mistakes and don't happen to make some of the same mistakes that I have made in the past. And uh, that was kind of my goal of uh, making this the topic discussion today. I hate seeing people make mistakes, especially if I had a chance to let them know ahead of time. So thank you so much. See y'all later. See ya. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.